ja ću vam sada pripustiti Mati, Matija dalje, a vidimo se na planu diskusiji od samog šasova, imat ćemo uključenje iz Splita, imamo neke novosti ili ti neke možda dobre korisne savete, da nas u Srbiji popričat ćemo onda o svemu onome što se dešava, nadamo se da će kolege i posle imati takođe korisne savete jer su neki propisi malo drugačiji, pričat ćemo o eventualnom udruživanju, pa oto da je ovaj moto koji vidite i koji će dobiti na kraju naše kružine sutra i kao malo popunu na šovicama za taj kraj. Vidimo se, uživajte za sve što bude potrebno u toku današnjih dana i sutra, mi smo tu na raspolaganju, ne možete se sručavati, ovo da pitate sve što treba. Da vam se zahvalim što ste o pomoći na takvi ste se jesu ipak došli da prisutstvojete ovom događaju. Prenosim vam pozdrav od Čikavcu Roševića koji je i organizovao i zamislio sve ovo i koji, nažalost, na kraju nije sa nama i ne znam šta vam kažem, samo družite se, poznajte se, razmenite kontakte, ovo je prava prilika za to, jer ljudi ste svi iz potpuno iste priče. Ja bih vas vrlo rad, ja ću vrlo rado da vas prepustim dvoma veoma zanimljivih i zanimljivih ljudi koji se nadam da će vam dati dosta korisnih savjeta za ono što radite i čime se bavite. Uskoro to su Sanja Josipović i Karlo Poljaković. Ja bih predao njima odmah reč da ne dužim mnogo. Ok, hvala Matija. Now we switch to English, if that's all right with you. Okay, welcome all. We are going to split into groups now, smaller groups. Obviously much smaller than we expected, but that's fine. We are happy with it. So one group will go with Carlo now when we split into two groups, A and B and uh, one will stay here. Then we'll swap in an hour. Okay. So you have to just decide whether you take the A's or I take the B's. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, A's stay here. <laughs> okay. So A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, that kind of count. Okay. And the B's come over with me and the A's stay here. Okay? A, B. And you say A, B, A, B, a, B, A, and then you count that and come over there. Yeah, pick a table, yeah. Uh, Matija, uh, Okay, I'm afraid one table also, we need four groups, okay, so. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, it's either four or three people, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can we start? Yes, thank you. Uh, the aims from teachers' point of view are to refresh your knowledge about process writing, peer assessment and formative assessment. Also to practice learning by doing, uh, by giving you a chance uh, to have some hands-on experience. From your uh, point of view, the learning outcomes, uh, you'll be able to be more confidently and effectively apply in class, again, these three 
um, processes, process writing, peer editing and formative assessment. We'll start with the quiz. Okay, I'll touch upon just a few things in the first 15 minutes um, from theory, from um, what is um, contemporary research about in uh, teaching writing and teaching assessment. So uh, I, will, I will just touch upon a few things. Believe me, it's a huge uh, area of research. So um, uh, I won't go into there, but just a little bit and then I'll give you uh, opportunity to practice. So uh, we'll do this quiz uh, in groups, in four groups. So I have two questions for each group. All right. We, I'll make it slightly competitive, just slightly. OK. So A, B, C, D. And you choose a, a number, and I give you my question. You have 15 seconds to answer. If you can't, uh, others will have a chance to to score a point. So two points for each correct answer. Mm. Let's start. So eight questions for all, two for each group. Jonathan, choose a number from one to eight. Uh, one. One, OK. What is another name for formative assessment? 15 seconds. Consult your peers. Formative assessment, keyword. It comes from Britain, from assessment giants. Three words, if I can help you. I'll give you the first letter. That's the first word. Second word is this. And it's your question, so what's another name for formative assessment? Pass. Thank you. Do you have the answer? Amina? Yeah, try, of course. Wow, uh, assessment is right, assessment. Four is the key word because we have assessment of learning, assessment as learning, and we have assessment for learning. That is, that actually explains formative assessment. And that's what teachers uh, usually miss. And that's why we are doing it today. Assessment for the purpose of learning. That's its purpose. So, well done. Group B scores one point because they stole um, their question. Now, choose a number from, uh, that it can't be number one. Amina, you can choose. Eight. Mm -hmm. What is team writing? Another key word for today's session. What is team writing? Mm -hmm. Team writing. Have you tried it? Emina, do you have the answer? OK, it partly answers it. Peer writing of what? OK, I'll give you one point. It is peer writing, uh, but uh, two or more professionals writing one in the same document. For example, an essay. Two people, or three, or four, write one essay, or report, article, etc. Thank you. C, choose a number. Four. Ah. It's a definition. You have to guess the word. It's one word. 
the art of persuasion, which along with grammar and logic, is one of the three ancient arts of discourse. I'll help you. It starts with R. I will. <laughs> the art of persuasion, which along with grammar and logic, is one of the three ancient arts of discourse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time? Answer? Pass? Not exactly. Okay, never mind. You have a chance, usually in clockwise, uh, so you first have a chance to for one point. You are right. Rhetoric. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yeah, good idea. But this is how I often do it with my students and, and it works because it's fair play. Thank you. Um, so, so that's a point for... for, for group D. Gr excellent, well done. Stolen. Okay, uh, you choose a number. Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Manger. An approach to teaching composition or writing uh, that emphasizes writing as a series of recursive steps, often including brainstorming, planning, Drafting, revising, and editing. Two words. I'll help you. Uh, two words. So that's which question? Was, uh, mm -hmm. I will. An approach to teaching writing. Approach to teaching writing. Uh, that emphasizes writing as a series of recursive steps, often including brainstorming, planning, drafting, revisioning, and editing. How do we call that approach to teaching writing? Mm -hmm. Five, four, Three, two, one. D, do you have the answer? No, we don't. We, we know that the second word is writing, obviously, but... You are right, yes. But uh, the key word is the first word. Is it something to do with the no, no, sorry. Sorry. No, never mind. Uh, group A has a chance to steal your point. You are right. So one point for you. Process writing. Uh, what is it opposite to those of you who, who know some of this theory? Process is opposite to what kind of writing? I'll talk about it a little today. O on the opposite side is product writing. Okay, and process is more modern and uh, more efficient. Okay, so that, that's what we are going to do today. This sum of process writing. Okay, so 1.4a. Second round, right, uh, so somebody else, not Jonathan, but somebody else, choose a number. Six, mm -hmm. all right, good one, but hard. Very, very technical word or term. Detailed information about a performance, including specific information about what was done well and how the performance could be improved, uh, meaning a writing performance. Very good, but that feedback is one word, which, uh, which would be... Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, two words is here. Feedback is definitely the second, but the first begins with C, extremely important. You got it, two points, well done. Constructive feedback. So not any feedback. Feedback has to be constructive. So well done, Group A. Thank you. Uh, B, choose number. Which numbers are left? Uh, 
uh, yeah, three and two. Okay, three. An evaluation tool um, or set of guidelines used to promote the consistent application of learning expectations, objectives, or standards. How do we call this evaluation tool? You'll do it with Carlo later. So you need to know this, again, technical term. Okay. Shall I repeat? Yeah. Evaluation tool or assessment tool or set of guidelines used to promote the consistent application of learning expectations, objectives or standards. Yes, thank you. Good suggestion. One word and the first letter is R. Five, four, three. Hmm? Rado? No. Never mind. Okay, you learn something new. It's technical, but it's useful. <laughs> Pass. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Pass. Good try, but no. <laughs> okay. Ah, it's a synonym, but I can't, I can't ad admit it because it starts I with R. It is a descriptor, but it's more than descriptor. It has, it is something. It is a tool that has different than descriptors that you are going to do with Carlo later. The technical word is? You're right. Hmm? damo jedan poem ili ne? Šta kažete? Zasluženo. Deserved. Okay. So, one for you. Stolen again. Um, number seven. Mm -hmm. Uh, working with someone in class to help improve his or her writing. How do we professionally call it? Hmm. Two words. Word, working with someone in class to help improve his or her writing. That's what we are going to do later in this class. Good, uh, it's P and second is E. Careful, careful, we are, this is all about writing, so. Two points, well done. Bravo, peer editing, excellent. So that's uh, C, two points, excellent, thank you. And the last is, I think, for you, right? Ah, oh, easy one, this one is easy, it's number one. No, two. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this stand for? Take your time. I think it's easy, maybe not. Okay, so what does this stand for in the English language teaching? L S R W. You have the answer? It stands for four skills, but uh, natural order of learning. You are right, well done, two points. Listening, speaking, reading, reading and, writing. and writing. Okay, so that's two points. Okay, that's the end of the quiz. Um, congratulations to group A, which is the winner of this quiz. Okay. Well done, but all of you were good. Right, so these are the key words of today's uh, class. Uh, some, not all, but most of the key words. Uh, why is writing last? 
who can, what do you think? Why is uh, writing last in this natural order of learning given the first language? We first uh, learn listening, then speaking, then... Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, raise your hand, yeah. Exactly. It, it's it, it's yeah. the natural order. That's right. Yes, but uh, writing is by many found uh, the most difficult uh, skill, even in uh, mother tongue, uh, let alone um, um, foreign language. Okay. Um, Uh, today, we'll just briefly um, talk about what writing is, why write, these are the key questions that teachers need to be aware of, what to teach, what to assess, and how to do it. Of course, this is a huge topic and I could, it could take me months to teach you everything I know about this, but we'll just... just uh, touch upon a few things briefly, briefly now. I will send you this um, presentation, don't worry, you don't need to take notes. Um, first, what writing is, I just want to remind you that it is a very complex process, not just a skill, it's a process, very difficult. And it is productive, <coughs> you produce language, it's interactive, it includes the writer and the readers. Uh, it's a linguistic process, it's a cognitively demanding process, it's effective, of course, emotions are involved, and it is sociocultural, it's a lot of dimensions from all these um, aspects. So um, it includes a collage of micro skills and knowledge. And if it's difficult for your students, uh, you need to understand that, uh, because they are right, it is difficult. First useful thing that uh, useful thing that I chose to to uh, remind you of also is uh, its um, comparison with speaking, another pro uh, productive skill. And I like to start with this um, saying: writing is a way of talking without being interrupted, uh, because in speaking you are being interrupted, right? Uh, so it's good to bear this in mind. Uh, it's also good to start with these um, stereotypical uh, contrasts. Um, it's a dichotomy that should not be taken for granted. But usually speaking is impermanent, whereas writing is permanent, it stays. Uh, speaking is often, not always, immediate or unplanned, but not always. And writing is usually delayed and planned. And uh, high paralinguistics is there in s during speaking, but low during writing, etc. Um, I won't go into all of this, but it's again for all teachers, in my opinion, important to be aware of the differences between uh, these two uh, productive skills. Uh, also, I won't go into details about um, current issues in the world uh, related to teaching writing skills, but these are some of the current issues. Composing versus writing, process writing versus product writing, I'll touch upon that today. Contrastive rhetoric, I'll touch upon that today also just a little bit. Um, differences between uh, first language and second language writing, authenticity in writing, how authentic your writing, you, your students' writing should be, and what's the role of the writing teacher today as opposed to f 50 years ago, for example. Um, let's start with contrastive rhetoric. Has anybody ever seen this? Um, graphic presentation of different rhetorics. Um, usually people love seeing it, although it is 50 years old. It's um, made by Robert Kaplan, a famous linguist, in his Patterns of Written Discourse. Uh, it is, of course, a generalization, but it's a good start, because for you it's important to, to, to remember this, 
because it contrasts different rhetorics. For example, uh, you can let's start with Russian or Slavic. You know, you start, it, it's how your thoughts are structured, usually. Uh, you start, then you digress, then you come back, then you digress again, etc. Uh, Romans, uh, Roman languages, they, also, they are very similar to Russian. So you start uh, making your point, then you digress, then you come back, etc. Oriental style is in somewhat uh, roundabout manner. So you kind of beat around the bush until you come to the main point. Semitic is full of backtracking, as you can see, uh, Arabic, Hebrew. Um, so again, this is generalization. Then, then it has some flower language. Then it comes back and I'll again, backtrack, etc. And the English rhetoric, Anglo-Saxon rhetoric, is straightforward. Okay, and. It is good for you to bear that in mind because you are teaching students who are not used to English rhetoric. Okay, so uh, it doesn't mean that you should only teach them English. It doesn't mean that we uh, deny different cultural rhetorics. But it's good to know that uh, if they write for English speaking uh, audience, they need to learn the English uh, or first exercise for you, first of three tasks that I plan for you, is to just graphically, um, or maybe there, I don't know, to um, draw a Serbian rhetoric. Graphic, just graphic presentation. You don't have to explain. What would it be like? Or maybe your personal, or something that has to do with Serbian, your students' rhetoric. What is it like? And we don't, when, when I say rhetoric, it's mainly re related to exposition rather than um, um, literary um, texts. So it's mainly about exposition and argumentation. Okay, it's rhetoric, it's about persuasion. How do Serbian students try to persuade you that they are right about something? How would you present it? <laughs> okay, just draw it so that you can show it to other groups. Okay, one minute to finish, please. Just draw it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you're done. Good, you? No, no idea. Of course, I understand that. Yeah, okay, but that's why you can specify somebody, maybe your students, yes, you one can group. I can specify myself. Your own. Also, it depends on the situation. I agree, so I agree, I'm exactly. Very often straight, like English. I like English, yes. because you're an English yeah. student. So, me too, I know. That also has to, I agree, yeah. Yeah, okay, no, no, fair enough. I absolutely respect that. Okay, but... Uh, it's interesting to see what um, other people have. Is, well, is we, haven't, we haven't finished yet. Uh -huh. We are with the, the examples that they give us, and then they continue with with the point. But we we don't know what to how to finish off the their way of expressing. Uh -huh. But do they man, do they manage? Well, Eventually, they do. <laughs> Open. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Never. Mind. You don't have to agree mm -hmm. on this. To make it their point. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we do, do they go in a linear fashion or they just uh, round the bush like the um, uh, oriental style? Mine don't. Mine don't. 
you know, they, they do get to the point mm -hmm. quickly. Uh, well, with, with a, a lot of persuasion and examples. Uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, so maybe B, can you show it to the rest of us and uh, say why it l looks like that? Can you show it to all groups? Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. First, they are determined, right? Yeah, but mm -hmm. then they are like, uh, I want to have this and that, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. different topics, different opinions, so they are okay. close in the middle. Yes, okay. I know a lot of examples like that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jonathan, what's uh, your group? We had three. Oh, there you are. Well, my students do that also. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we had, we had okay, can you look? Can you see? Uh -huh. Aha, they have a problem with content. Mm -hmm. yes. And they have very little reference and very little imagination with what to write. And, and that's ah. their biggest problem. That's with kid, problem with kids. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the good Serbian students, the ones who are good at L1, try and make it like a flower. They make it as flowery mm -hmm. as possible, going round and round and as long as possible, and with no beginnings. And I no love end. that. That is one of the current issues, yeah. yeah. How, the, how the first language conventions intervene uh, and influence the second language. Hmm? And the rest, it's just, they know which way to go, but they, everything's disconnected. And yes. They know they should be writing paragraphs, but the paragraphs are all... Yeah. They're not real paragraphs and stuff. In the end, they get to the end, but it's sort of very disconnected. Thank you so much. I love that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, C doesn't have a, uh, they couldn't agree on, uh, on, on uh, a graphic presentation, but D also has something to show us. You want to? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. They, they, they learned a lot yeah. then, yeah. So so they, they, they resemble the English rhetoric. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. No, no, it's but okay. Anyway, they have to give a lot of examples and a lot of situations. Even though it's like saying English, they can do this way and so uh -huh. on. And then they have to tell me, no, 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 teacher, no, they're not right. That's they that's are, you mm -hmm. know, the point is, and then they start giving me something which is English. Yes, probably you are. Okay, thank you very much. Another thing, okay, I have to move on because of time. Um, another thing that uh, linguists in uh, dealing with contrastive uh, rhetoric um, had uh, found is that the, it's an interesting contrast between reader-responsible and writer-responsible languages or essays. What do you think of this? Uh, for example, Anglo-Saxon uh, rhetoric, is it more a reader responsible, do you think, or a writer responsible? Who is more responsible in this communication process? This is very interesting. For clarity of the, and the, of the composition, of the, of the message. Um, Th that is communicated. Writer. What do you think, Jonathan? Writer exactly. Anglo-Saxon rhetoric is very writer responsible. Mm -hmm. And generally people say that uh, Serbian or Slavic also is not so writer responsible but more uh, reader responsible. So we, when we try to persuade, we, we leave um, the audience um, to decide what, what they want. But we said what we wanted to, and they can understand. What did the uh, writer want to say? Yeah, yeah. And it's OK in literature, but in, uh, in expository essays and in argumentation, it's really better to stick to Anglo-Saxon rhetoric, I'm afraid. Yeah. OK, so th that was just a brief thank you for participating mm, second uh, point uh, to be extremely aware of all the time if you teach if you are a teacher of writing and assessing writing is why people write in the first place why write 
And here are some uh, examples of why people write, not only in the foreign language, but in mother tongue also. So to send messages, uh, to communicate over distances, across time, to participate in society, to remember and record, for example, note taking. I don't know about you, but I always, when I was a student, I loved note uh, taking because it helped me uh, remember mm -hmm. or, or rewriting some notes at home. It helped me learn. Um, to make thought visible also for some people, to express your inner self uh, for creative writers, etc., etc. Uh, what to teach uh, in your um, foreign language class? Uh, these are just important, three important things that I want to remind you of. First, what do you write in real life? So you teachers need to know why it's useful for real life. Otherwise, how can you persuade them? Uh, what we write in class, what kinds of writing we we perform in class and extremely important who they and you write for. I get the feeling that uh, our students often don't have this in mind. Who, what kind of audience they write for and that's why they go wrong in many uh, aspects. So uh, that's why I, am, I wanted to remind you of this. Um, as for our teaching in class, we have a lot of uh, types of writing performance in class and I won't go into all of them, uh, just into display and real writing uh, because they are most complex of these uh, seven. Display writing is uh, when you write for display, to please your teacher, okay, display. Uh, so essays belong here. Uh, test situation uh, writing belongs here, any classroom task can belong here, etc. But the point is this is written for the teacher, to, for a grade for example, uh, for a display. Uh, the best kind of writing that you can possibly organize in your classes is called real writing. And that refers, that is composing uh, not only writing. It, uh, the, it is um, genuine communication of messages to an audience in need of these messages. So that is communicative uh, approach. You have A and B and A has information that B doesn't you are all aware of this information gap necessary for any communicative classroom. So that's when um, you will have um, better readers if they really need to see what A wanted to say. So this real writing is extremely important and it, is, um, it can be achieved in academic uh, writing, in vocational or technical writing and also in personal writing. We are going to practice today some academic real writing because we will practice peer editing uh, uh, and uh, it can also be uh, th performed from, um, in group problem solving. I won't go into vocational and personal right now because I want us quickly to um, start this task. How to teach writing? Well, there are many ways, but um, one of the most efficient ones is um, uh, seen in this uh, old Chinese proverb, which says, tell me and I will forget, show me and I will remember, I may remember actually, involve me and I will learn. And as we all know, the whole point of our teaching is learning. So it is learner, learning centered and learner centered. If we involve all our students in writing. And that's what I'm going to do with you in a minute. Um, product versus process uh, writing, uh, just to remind you, uh, probably your teachers uh, mentioned that at university. 
uh, product approach is um, considered mechanical. It's focused mainly on the product, uh, whereas in process approach, uh, it is less mechanical writing. Uh, product will eventually uh, be made, but uh, writing is not a linear process, but exploratory, recursive and creative process. Okay, that's how pro uh, this approach, uh, it's, it's over there, uh, to writing, um, that, that's what it relies on. So it is less linear and less mechanical than product approach. A lot of uh, um, creativity is involved in it and collaboration is another key word. Uh, Hemingway is famous for his uh, saying, and not only Hemingway, but all good, many good writers say that writing is actually rewriting. And there is no such thing as good writing. There is only good rewriting. Um, Nabokov also has a nice quote. I have rewritten often several times every single word I have ever published. My pencils outlast their erasers. Why am I telling you this? How does it translate to your classrooms? These sayings by famous and good write, world writers. What is Exactly, the need to edit. Do our students like editing? Normally not, okay. So I, I tried for years uh, to, when I taught writing, uh, to involve all my students into this peer editing because it is also uh, rewriting actually and a lot of writing. And it has to happen in class, not for homework. That's where the teachers go wrong. They say, okay, do it for homework. That's certainly wrong. Some things can be done for homework, but you have to do some writing in class, no matter how time consuming it is. You have to do it in class with them so that you are also there to help them uh, in uh, different um, aspect or elements of, of writing. Um, in uh, process writing, uh, there are many different stages, but the main stages are four. Pre-writing, drafting, editing or revising and presenting. Process writing uh, includes real writing. That's why we have this final presenting. Not only for the teacher, but maybe in a school magazine, as a blog on the internet, you know, for some real audience. That's extremely important if you want to succeed or your students to succeed. So pre-writing is mainly about planning and thinking, brainstorming, free writing, outlining, etc. Drafting is about putting the ideas uh, and thoughts together and on paper, forming sentences, paragraphs, editing, is a very long process. It can uh, last one class, two classes, four classes. Um, and it includes uh, reflecting, rewriting, rearranging sentences, giving feedback to your peers, which you are going to do in a moment, and proofreading. So these are all different stages of editing until we reach the final draft, uh, which is a little masterpiece. And of course, uh, we have a long way to go till we reach that. Um, I will, I th because of time, I won't go into um, principles for designing good writing techniques, but this is a good list from uh, Douglas Brown, where he gives you some important tips about writing. Now we'll start writing. Stop listening and start writing and this is just a re reminder of rubric the technical word from the beginning of the class and i have brought you uh, the maybe one of the oldest rubrics in teaching writing it was 
at least uh, 40 years old. Now it is uh, different, but in the, by Jacobs et al. Um, it is an um, analytical assessment of writing and it gives five different scores for content, organization, uh, language use, vocabulary and mechanics. Uh, but you don't have to do it now, I'll, I'll give it to you to take home. Maybe some of you are familiar with it, it's very famous, this one, and also very old. Uh, with, with, but very good. Uh, with Carlo, uh, you will later uh, have some of his rubrics related to FC uh, or B2 exam from Cambridge English. And of course, uh, if you are interested in how to assess uh, writing professionally, just uh, go to cambridgeenglish.org and you'll find a lot of tips. But let's try and perform some in this class. I will now ask you to write, to perform some team writing. Okay, you, it, can, it is usually done best in pairs. But if you want, you can write in groups of three. So you produce one piece of writing. Uh, you produce one or two, it's up to you, also, also. All right? And the task is this, have a look at the task. I'm here to ask any question. Task one, we do first for 10 minutes. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. Task one, mm -hmm. okay, for the three of you. Do you need one more, but it's the same. Okay, and for you. Have a look. Yeah, you need a, you need a, I have here p paper for you. Team writing. There is more, more paper if you need. Any questions before I start timing you? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. If, uh, because I give you 10 minutes and the grace period is five minutes. So ask me questions now. Task one, don't look at task two now. Just task one is for 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, what do you have to do? Let me check if you understood instructions. Okay, what's your name? Zolte. Zolte, please. Uh, what is the task? Uh, what do you have to do? To write uh, all in pairs or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or groups. Or groups. To write what? To uh, write about, about why we are uh, give a reason why mm -hmm. do we. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are more reasons to learn to write in a foreign language than to pass a test. Exactly. And we have these notes and we have to give yes. reasons for every note. Mm -hmm. or exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a modified task from uh, first certificate exam, writing exam. Okay, so I modified it, but the, they also, your students preparing for FC have to pass uh, one question that is exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can pass yeah, it. Yeah, let's see if you can pass it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All clear? No questions?
team. Yeah, it will probably be quicker. Okay. <laughs> Ten minutes is really, it flies. It would be one. nice, you know, this is like uh, in an FC exam, FC exam. exactly, oh. you know, yeah, and if they, never yeah, never it, it's a modification, yeah, mm -hmm. oh. so it would be good, you'll get extra points, because I'll give you a writing to somebody to assess, so, yeah, please, one person writes, is it two groups in here? Yeah, yeah, two. Ah, okay. I know, I know. You, I put you into your students' shoes. Sorry, but, but it's it's good for you. Yeah. Oh, you are still a note outlining. Good, but our notes are very deep, so we'll, we'll finish in a minute. <laughs> are you sure? How long have we got left? I have five minutes left. Okay, then I'll take your papers. Two minutes. I know, I know, I know. I, that, that's the point. That's my point. <laughs> I know. Sorry, no. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, one minute. Don't worry, this is just a drafting stage, so it's not the final stage. We expect uh, mistakes here, don't you worry. Don't <laughs> Perfectionist. <laughs> never mind, never mind, just do your best. Oh. Thank you, time. Please sign your papers because, and then give, it, give them to me. Uh, sign, sign, just names, first names. That's, okay. Thank you so much. You're the quickest team. We don't have a hundred And nobody is perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Can I have your paper, please? Yeah. Ah, okay. No, it'll, it'll come back to you. Oh, okay. But in a minute. Now you, since you finished first, have a look at task two. Mm -hmm. Okay, you finished? Ah, is it, please sign, all of you. Ah, team A, it's up to you, but yeah. No, no, it's okay. Thank you, thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, it'll get back to you soon. Okay, uh, this is for you. Uh, finished? Thank you so much. You signed? Don't worry, don't, it's a drafting stage, don't worry. Yes. We know what to say, but we didn't make it. It's because we, I made you work against the clock, so don't worry. It's hard. Okay, for you. Okay. If you finished, uh, you can have a look at task two now. Task two now. Okay, there you are. <laughs> okay. Task two. Task two. Uh -huh. uh, okay, finished. Thank you. Um, a task two now. Uh, I'll give you this. Oh. Mm. Wait a second. I'll give you this one, and you give me your paper. This is. Ah, you have. Uh -huh. okay. mm. Whose is this? Ours. Ah, okay. Uh, that's for you. So do all groups have a paper to assess? Yes. OK, uh, any questions before you start assessing? I want you to make at least four sentences to give constructive feedback to your colleagues. All right? It has to be constructive, positive and constructive. Four things are necessary, uh, something about content, something about organization, communicative achievement or style of writing, and uh, language. Okay. Sentences or just notes? Use notes? Uh, sentences to, uh, to write your feedback. Constructive feedback in sentences. Sorry, somebody else can uh, replace you. Yeah, yeah, please don't. <laughs> Reading, thinking, and writing, please. Ten minutes for this. Oh, we are late already. Carlo finished. <laughs> okay. We didn't 
re uh, read well. So it was one paragraph. We wrote the whole essay. So that's oh, great. Okay. Even better. Good. Well done. Okay. Now you as you assess yeah. according to these mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, on that paper, yeah, on the back, maybe, or below. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Can we just write, write your comments and uh, sign again. Three minutes. Three. Oh, you went from ten to three. <laughs> you, you have more experience now. You are more. Uh, yeah, please. No, no, write, write, write your feedback. Constructive feedback on paper. Positive, please. What good do you see in it? Talk about good things. Present. Present. Take home. Present, take home. <laughs> One minute. Time. I'm giving you grace men one minute. Works well under pressure. Well done. I'm serious. Oh my God! It's a proper essay. Longer than ours. Well done. Well, yeah, excellent. Okay, two two teams finished. Please finish. Never mind. Okay. You signed it, thank you. Can I have it? Did we sign it? We no. Uh huh. Please Sorry. sign. The assessors, sign. Just type otherwise in Uh huh. 
Uh-huh, sign, please. Never mind. This is still drafting. Oh, we did it so well, but we didn't realize. <laughs> we didn't finish the. the uh -huh. oh, don't you worry. This is uh, just to show you what your students will go through uh, when you give them this task. Yeah, but uh, hmm? uh, somehow I I don't feel good when I uh, work under pressure. Yes. Oh, neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> That's normal, but um, neither do our students. Yeah. Yes, the, the students. So are. I know, I know. I'm not saying that you have to do it like this. I just wanted you to experience it, mm -hmm. and then you can give them 20 minutes if you yeah. want. It's up to you, but just uh, to try applying this method in uh, with your students, mm -hmm. because with our students it really works. Mm -hmm. You have to decide on the spot. Never mind, please finish. finish. Yeah, finish. you have, yeah, just sign whatever. Thank you. So who's? Uh -huh. All right, team A. Ah, okay. Read your, you have your feedback. There you are, read it, and I want you to comment then um, verbally. Mm -hmm. Whose is this? Uh, Danica Jelica? Aha, uh -huh, that's you. Yours is finished, your feedback is finished. Have you finished yours? Yes, we, we are finishing it now. Okay, thank you. Can you give it to me, please? Mm -hmm. Well that's done. Mm, that's fine. Can you sign? Did you sign? Read it. Yeah, okay. So it's related to this paper. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's, uh, this is Yasmina and Katarina. Who is that? Okay, here is your feedback. Mm -hmm. There you are. And please give, it, give yours to me. Thank you. Did you sign? The assessors sign, yeah. The authors of feedback. Mm -hmm. oh, just in. thank you very much. Okay, so this is Emina Dragana. Ah. There you are. Here's your feedback. Read it and then comment when I ask you. Oh, there is your paper. <laughs> Have you finished? Uh, I think we have given it to yes, you. Yes, we have. We have. Uh -huh. oh, what are your names? Doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Where did I Doesn't lose it? <laughs> oh, God. That's strange. Okay, thank you. Uh, does everybody have their paper now with comments? Yes, yes? okay. So the, thank you for uh, doing the, performing the drafting uh, stage. Now, how happy are you with the comments you got? Is the feedback constructive enough or not? Bearing in mind we had little time. I mean, what can you do for an hour? But you are excellent uh, taking that into consideration. So. Are you, how happy are you with the comment? Feel free to comment. Fine. Exactly. So it is no, no. It is about uh, seeing positive elements, but also suggesting things that could be improved. Of course, for that uh, you you need more time. But basically, this is how it works in the classroom. That's why we wrote something to improve. I apologize. You did, you did write. No, that's very constructive. We'll see, let's see what they think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> okay, who got uh, Team A's comments? Ah, okay. Did you have you read it? Yes. Are you happy with the comments? Yeah. There you are. You even got a smiley mm -hmm. face. Yes, yes, yes. We appreciate that. Okay. It was, uh, it was clear, and there were some uh, um, constructive yeah. suggestions. Mm -hmm. so yes. We appreciate friendship. Thank you. Of course. Of course, and you should. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, group uh, B, comment on the comments. Are you happy with it? All right, interesting. Yeah, can you explain? Me personally. Yeah, that's right. Because we didn't get the full sentences. Aha, in your comments, okay. So, in fact, you wanted more uh, commentary. Because we got a comment that our content is good, average. Uh huh. And I would like further explanation on what that means. Like yes, what, fair enough. What would be yes. It, what would uh, what would you need to do to make it excellent? Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's like a draft comment. I would say. Yes. Okay. Exactly. For the time we had, it is. Yeah. And you are wonderful <laughs> for for ten minutes or less. <laughs> you you were excellent, all of you. Thank you. Uh, you didn't get your paper got lost. I don't know what happened to it. Sorry. <laughs> we'll we'll eventually find out. Um, uh, what's your name? Yasmina. Yasmina, uh, what about uh, your uh, feedback? Was it constructive? Uh, up to a point. Uh -huh. uh, Thank you. I think that, that um, mm. uh, the colleagues were under impression of the last thing we wrote. Uh huh. Okay. And then, yes, it says content some great ideas, and then why is important to write for pleasure? And, and we wrote it just a little bit in the end. Mm. So sometimes we, as teachers, we are under impression of what we, we last read. Yes, thank and you. Very okay. important point. Mm -hmm. Thanks Everything a lot. Else is, is great. Okay, it's, it's a beginning, but it would probably influence your uh, next version, which would be better. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wants to comment? If not, uh, have a one minute break. Uh, thank you so much for participating, for hard work, um, and um, see you during the breaks. Now, you should move to Carlo, Carlo's room on the right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>